I think I have accidentally made the ultimate mining tool. So last episode, we ended up getting this fantastic elytra, and this is going to be great, but I do have to worry about durability as of right now, but that's soon going to change, because today we are going to be diving into Forbidden and Arcanus, and we are going to make ourselves an altar, basically a ritual area, where we can then devise a solution to this, well, durability problem. Now, this is going to take some sacrificing. Well, that's just one of the main mechanics that we're going to be using today. But we also are going to be basically creating some sort of aura using some very interesting multi-block kind of mechanics. Uh, let me actually show you. First, though, we need to take a dive underground because there is a material that is going to be fundamental to this mod. And it, it is right around Y level negative 55. We're going to find it right above bedrock and it is very, very far down here. And that is this material right here. Dark stone from Forbidden and Arcanus. Now, not only is this uh, particular stone going to be needed, we are going to be needing actually several materials from the Forbidden mod. Um, so throughout our mining, we have found these runes. Runes are going to be important for us to complete this whole project that we're going to be working on because we're going to need uh, these runes to be able to make vials. Um, that is one of their main uses, right, is vials. We're also going to need them to be able to make dark runes, which we're going to need for a dagger. This is how we're going to get blood for this so-called altar that we're going to be making. Um, and this altar is a multi-block. So you can see these blocks I have listed up here. These are all going to add up and we are going to be using that to eventually make this fantastic item called an Eternal Stella. And the Eternal Stella, when used in a smithing table with an item, with like a, a piece of gear or a sword or anything that has durability, it will then turn it into an Eternal variant of that meaning that it will never break. Now, is this easy to get started with? Well, kind of. Uh, it does require you to have killed quite a few phantoms, however, so you are going to have some sleepless nights. Um, but you're also going to need Stellarite, which is found underground. And then, like I said, you're also gonna need these runes. These are all found underground. They're not super common, but if you go caving, you're bound to find some. We've actually found some just while we were mining, looking for, I don't know, like a structure a few episodes ago. Now, after doing a bit of mining to be able to get this stuff, I do wanna head up into the copper mine section. Probably gonna end up renaming this as this is probably going to be the place where I at least get this structure built. It's not gonna go above ground. In fact, it's going to go right in this area that I've been clearing out. And I also built a nice little elevator structure around the elevator itself. And this is going to be perfect. I'm going to have an area where we walk out and I can just walk out and go boop. Right here is going to be our altar. Uh, and I think that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm still deciding on whether or not I'm going to keep this like, I don't know, the same sort of like organic uh, kind of underground fill or if I'm going to completely modify the entire area. I'm still thinking about keeping the organic fill. Now, as far as actually building this structure, there's no like in-game guide for the forge. Uh, so if we take a look at the Hephaestus Forge, which is what this sort of uh, item looks like or, or what this, uh, this sort of interface is talking about, it's coming from this Hephaestus Forge. Now, the Hephaestus Forge by itself, uh, outside of its own wiki, which is on the Valhalsia wiki, um, you, you really won't know how to build it. <laughs> it doesn't give any indication in game or anything like that. Uh, so the kind of best way to describe it is you're going to need a nine by nine area roughly in order to actually build this structure. So keep that in mind. And to make this, we are going to need some moon to beater <laughs> dust. And we're also going to need some of the Diorum ingots. Uh, both of these are going to be important. This is where I said those phantoms come into play. Some blaze powder. We also need arcane crystal. So that's another material that you get from these arcane crystals, which you can find the ore in game. Um, and then we also need... Uh, to combine that all together. So uh, I think all together, we are going to need 48 polished deep or dark stone. We need nine of the arcane chiseled polished dark stone. These, these titles are quite long. 
And we also need four of the chiseled arcane polished dark stone. And then we're going to need a few dark stone pedestals, depending on the Hephaestus ritual that you're doing. You can see right here, this is six. So at most, you are going to only ever need six. But to be able to make the eternal Stella that we need, well, we don't need six. We only need four, which is going to leave room for this Ariel. This stuff right here, these two other slots, which I'm going to talk about here in a moment, are actually multi-blocks. And we can get this passively, at least this thing passively through these multi-blocks we're gonna build. Now, when building out this ritual area, I went about five blocks away here, and then this is going to extend nine blocks in this direction. Um, so the best way to kind of visualize this is to place three blocks down and then kind of start in the middle. We're gonna go one block out. The next one is going to be that chiseled polished dark stone. And then we're gonna have a regular dark stone. And then we are gonna utilize these polished versions. These are very, very fancy blocks. Uh, and then in the middle, we are going to use another of the chiseled polished, just like that. And then it's going to rinse and repeat this pattern all the way through. Um, so very, very simple, all the way till we get to this exact copy on the other side. So just like this, and then we are gonna go again, boop, and last but not least, this block. Um, and then this is going to extend three blocks, just like so. Um, and then we can kind of work our way out from the middle. So again, I'll go right here and here, and then this is going to repeat the same as this side. Um, and then we get to work on the outside. So now with this beautiful X or plus in the center, we can go ahead and build off three blocks on all of these sides. That's probably the easiest way to kind of visualize this. Uh, and then in the middle block here, we are going to finish off placing the rest of our polished in all of these corners. And then last but not least, we just need to cover all of the faces just like this. And there we go. This is the multi-block floor of the Hephaestus Forge. Um, well, almost. Uh, I believe we also have to add the corners in right here. So there we go. So with this all done, this floor that you see right here is going to be where we actually interact with the forge. Now, uh, when it comes to the forge, we actually need to place this in, but it doesn't really tell you how you get the forge. Uh, the forge actually is going to require a hammer. And so we do need to make a hammer. I think it's called a mallet uh, from Forbidden. And you can make it out of all kinds of different materials, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, so you can make it out of stone. You can make it out of iron. I'm going to go ahead and just make it out of iron, which is pretty normal. Uh, and then we're going to need a smithing table. So it doesn't necessarily tell you that you're going to need this. But if you place a smithing table down in the center... And then you right click it with the gavel, uh, or sorry, not gavel, you need the Munda Beater Dust. Uh, shift right click, there you go. It turns it into the Hephaestus Forge. Um, and so there we go. So now we have the forge and we're almost there, almost done. So we can go ahead and place our pedestals in like this, right? And so, perfect. So now we already have our pedestals. This is where they would go. But we are still missing a few other components, right? Because when we open this up, you can see we're missing that Ariel. Well, we can actually generate this material. Now, to be able to generate it, this is what we're going to need. Two blocks of these arcane crystal blocks, at least to make the multi-block. I'm going to use four because I want to make two of them. And to be able to make this, you're going to place down the arcane polished dark stone right here. And then you're going to build up two blocks. So two blocks of these arcane crystals like this. And then you're going to hit that with the Munda Beater. So shift right click. And there it goes. It gets turned into an Arcane Crystal Obelisk, and this is going to passively start to generate that Ariel uh, uh, essence that we're going to need. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You could set up four of these, depending on how much you have. It's just going to generate it faster, allowing you to do more crafts quicker. Now, in the terms of making the Stella, we are still not done. There's actually a couple of other things we need. One being experience. We also need some blood in here, and we also need some souls. Um, souls are, are, are going to come from the soul extractor. Um, so let's see, extractor, this thing right here. Um, and it's, it's not too bad to make. However, we're going to interact with our first problem and that's the Edelwood logs. So the Edelwood logs, we actually need to find in a dark forest and I have not gone to a dark forest yet. So, well, we've got to make a trip. So inside of our compass, we can search for a dark forest, and it looks like there is one about a thousand blocks out in this direction. 
which is going to be perfect. And this right here is why the Elytra is just so good. Oh, I can just fly around now, just just casually. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to go over here. Oh, just just give me a, literally a minute because it, it takes no time at all now to fly around. Oh, this is actually really, really nice. It's going to be really also nice when I don't have to worry about its durability at all. Oh, which is soon to happen. Soon, soon, soon. Okay, so we should be approaching and right here. Okay, it looks like we have hit our target. And we need to kind of look around in this dark forest here. Ah, for these right here. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is a carved Elderwood log. And we need these logs. So we're going to need a couple of them. I don't need a whole bunch, but they are found in this dark forest. And they're, they kind of stick out like a sore thumb. They've got a little face on them. So now with these logs, I need to do a couple of things. One of them is, I think, smelt a couple of them. So I definitely need to smelt a few of these. Uh, and then the rest can be turned into planks right here. Because, of course, we're going to need that. Uh, and this gets turned into dark matter. Now, we are going to be able to use this in order to make a magical dagger. Uh, so we need some corrupty dust, which is going to require more of this iron infused obsidian. Um, which we definitely used before because that's how we ended up making our, uh, our yeah, our Draco uh, Arcana Scepter, which uh, strikes lightning on things. Um, but yes, this is all going to add up. Now, the dagger is going to be used to uh, generate blood into our vials. And then we also need this thing, right? So we needed a regular jar. And we need some quartz. And this is going to get our souls that we need for there. Um, so we're very close. We're very close. We also need this stick, which I did get a stick from our our uh, stuff that we just did. Um, so after getting those logs. Uh, and let's see. Anything else? I think this is it. We just need to make a little bit more of this material. A little bit of crafting today. Uh, but it's all going to pay off. It's all going to be worth it. So there's some corrupty dust. Now, I think with the corrupty dust, I think you could technically use this on a sapling, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it's not the corrupty ducks dust. Maybe it's the corrupted pixie, which I think we can make later on. Then you can actually convert this sapling into one of the dark Elderwood uh, saplings. Um, so there is a way to technically do that. Like I said, all of this is not really super covered in the mod itself. You kind of have to look at the wiki. Uh, but here we go. So I thankfully have enough for this and one rune left over to make a vial, which we definitely need to do. So let's go ahead and make the vial. And this is going to contain the blood that we need in order to complete our ritual here. Okay, so I think we have enough for the, the knife. So there we go. Something like this. <laughs> Everything all gets kind of pulled together, doesn't it? There we go. Now we should have the knife. Oh boy, there's a lot of steps. Okay, perfect. Mystical dagger, nice. Uh, so this also has a, uh, multiple uses. It can take our dragon skulls and turn them into dragon scales, and then we can actually make this armor, and this armor is quite powerful. Uh, it is better than the, the netherite armor that we currently have, and then it gets tiered up even further with these golden scales uh, and these aqua scales here to make even better than the base Draco armor. So yeah, it, <laughs> this mod can be very powerful. They don't underestimate this. Now, soul sand is a good way to get souls. Um, so we can play soul sand down and we can use the soul extractor on it to pull out a soul. So just like that, we now have a soul. And as far as mobs go to get blood in the test tube, we should be able to like take out, for example, cows and stuff. And so me just doing that filled this entire thing with 3,000 blood. So something to note, if you have an animal farm, this would probably be the best way. Uh, other than that, just killing regular hostile mobs will work. So all we have to do now, now you can see this is completely full, is we can put the blood in here. So the test tube is going to fill that up. Uh, and then the souls, we put in the soul area. And now that is one of one souls. And now for the experience, I think we can utilize the Experified orbs inside of here for the experience instead of bottles. It looks like you can only use bottles, but you can actually use the Experified orbs that you can find in the ore. And that's basically it. 
So we are pretty much ready to go, I think. In this particular version, there is no leveling of the forge. There is only one forge type, but in like 120 in the newer versions, there are multiple multiple stages of the forge you have to upgrade through. Now this material right here is the actual Stellarite. Uh, now we've already got a Stellarite piece, but this is what that material looks like and it does blow up. So keep that in mind. You could potentially mine it and not realize that and actually die to it. Um, so yeah, be weary of that or wary of that. Um, so the Stel Stellarite piece, let's see, what else do we actually need to make the Stella? Like this, we're, we're getting very close be able to make this. So we just need a diamond. Ooh, I'm pretty excited because this is, makes it completely unbreakable. All right, diamond, and then, yeah, the three experience, and that's basically it. Oh, goodness. So, experified orbs, and we're, we're good. Like, this is, this is it. So, one, two, and three, and then we put the stellarite on one of the pedestals, and then in the middle is our diamond, and then this is where that that gavel comes into play. We should be able to just right click. And when we do that, we get to see this take place. And this is going to generate that Stellarite uh, or that, uh, yeah, that, uh, what is it called now? Eternal Stella. Oh, goodness. So we are very close to having an, un, an absolutely unbreakable Elytra. I mean, just another step, another another tick off the uh, the checklist of things to do. And then we can just continue to make them so long as we find this material, which is not too hard to find caving. Also, this takes a little bit of time, but believe me, it is so worth it. Oh, something else to note. If you have like a step up or like step up stuff, you can actually step up these typically, which kind of acts as like a little little stair. Very interesting. All right. Well, it's almost done. Believe me. It takes a long time. Oh, gosh. And as soon as it's done, this will spit out a Stella. I don't want to interact. There it goes. There it goes. Perfect. So now we have our first Eternal Stella. And the first thing I want to do with this is go upstairs as soon as I can. And we are going to basically add this in a smithing table to our Elytra. So let's grab this and I am going to put this in here. So we should be able to do this with our Stella and notice it doesn't look like it's going to work. And that is because these, this has enchants on it. So, um, I think the legacy has that book, right? That we can make. Um, and then we should be able to actually extract the enchants off of it. Yes. This thing right here, the tome of hungering knowledge. Ah, uh, yes. So let's go ahead and pull this off of our Elytra. And now we should be able to combine this. Or at least I thought we were supposed to be able to. Can we not combine it? It does look like it should be able to be combined with it. Oh, interesting. I guess it just automatically goes in the wrong slot. You can see it goes here, but it actually needs to go here. Ah, oh, these darn texture packs. But there we go. Now we have the Eternal Elytra. So no need for it to ever be enchanted anyways. And I don't mind. Uh, we could enchant it now, though. We could definitely put these back on here. But this should now be absolutely unbreakable. So that means I can use my skills and fly around. And this should never break. An unlimited flight elytra. Ah, it's just, it's just nice to know. <laughs> it is just nice to know that this is never going to break on me. So now just thinking about the things that we could potentially make completely unbreakable, it just, I mean, it's it's exciting. It's exciting because there's a lot of things that we can now use, for example, inside of like a deployer, right? Or at least we should be able to use stuff like inside of a deployer for potential farms and things like that. Uh, and because of its uh, unbreakability, we don't have to worry about being able to pull it out of here and repairing it in some way. Now, with all of that done, I definitely want to start work on making that area look a little bit nicer. So, yeah, as of right now, this is kind of meh down here. Uh, and uh, it is very bright because we do have our little charm here of the treasure hunter. But if I take that off, we now see exactly what this looks like. Um, so I've tried my best to make this as circular as possible, and I already cleared out the floor. So I do want to 
kind of mix and match some of this dark stone maybe into the rest of the floor here. So yet again, the trowel is going to play a pivotal role. I'm using some blocks of flint, some cobbled black stone, and also some of that dark stone. And I want to kind of mix and match, kind of placing this in a little randomly as of right now, because I want to make sure this is definitely formed from the center here, because I think I'm going to have some other materials potentially branch out from this as I continue on. But yeah, this is this is going to look pretty good, I think, all mixed and matched together. These are kind of similar colors and textures. So yeah, it, it actually, yeah, it fits really nice. Now, I definitely want to add in some accents here. So something like this. Um, and then I'm going to uh, basically have some like roof supports. So this is going to be some sticks here. But if we do some fence and, for example, we put some like spruce fence here, I can take some stone and we can make some nice looking supports. So, for example, right here, and then I add this running down and it just kind of adds something, you know, it just it, instead of it feeling kind of flat, we have these nice little areas here kind of distracting us from everything else going on. Tell you what, when I get into the building mood, it is really hard for me to stop. I, I don't want to stop. I want to keep on building. I'm currently working on like making this the mining area, right? Because I still want areas where I can come in here and mine. So I made sure to make this like sort of focused here. Um, and then I've added some like copper blocks because this is our copper mining area. But it's also the area where we have our forge here. So I'm still figuring out what I'm going to do here. I think maybe adding some leaves uh, would be nice in some capacity, but maybe not exactly these like floofy leaves. I don't know. I I definitely need some lights too. So I may have gotten a little carried away and uh, well, <laughs> I started adding dripstone. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to add at least bits and bobs here just to kind of be like a distraction from the walls. Um, and yeah, it works out pretty nice having these columns here. I added the firefly jar from iron spells connected to a rope, uh, which is connected to a rope pulley from supplementaries. And then we have a fence up here. And then these fence, I've just used rope to kind of make them look a little bit different and like they have actually something connected to them, which I think looks pretty darn cool. All of this together. Oh, that's going to be very nice coming down here to mine. Even added some scaffolding to make it look like I'm kind of using scaffolding to get up to the higher ores. Ah, yes. All in all, this is a huge success. At least I think it is. What do you think? See, I knew those flint blocks would actually come in handy. These would make a really good road as well. These flint blocks almost look like, uh, they look like asphalt, really. Now, even though I've got my build on, there are actually still some forbidden and arcana stuff that's actually pretty insane that we can make uh, that are going to be very nice in this pack. One being the Terra Stomp Prism. So the Terra Stomp Prism right here, this does require some more of the materials that we have set up, uh, but it's also going to require, a, looks like all six of the pedestals. Thankfully, by the way, we can actually break these. And whenever they drop, they just drop into an item. Uh, and then we can replace that item on the ground, just like so, like that. Perfect. So I just need to make a couple more pedestals and I can make this Terra Stomp Prism and I can show you what this amazing item can do. Now I am a complete dork. I thought that I needed like eight pedestals for some reason, even though I really only needed six and I was thinking I needed to remove these, but I really don't. So this actually works out perfect. Now, this recipe for this prism is kind of expensive in the fact that it costs a single block of diamonds, but the tool that it's going to allow us to make is going to be very, very worth it. So um, all we have to do now is just simply hit it with our hammer um, so let me go ahead and grab that back out. And all of this, all of this requires is just a few, like, simple mining materials. Like, that's really it. And there we go. So this is going to craft up that prism, and then we get to really see the magic. And so now that this is done, let's go ahead and take this Terra Stomp Prism out and actually take a look at what it does. This allows us to put it onto a tool and it will allow that tool to mine in a three by three area. Now, because of this, it's going to be really hard to kind of know what tool has the ability to mine a three by three unless the tool that we specify actually looks like, I don't know, a, a hammer. 
So yes, the gavels can actually be used as regular pickaxes. And I think this is the perfect tool for this. Um, and to dive even further into more forbidden, we can go all the way up into a netherite version of this tool if we want. Um, and they will all have their own associated durability. So you can see this one has a uh, pretty high durability and this one's going to have even higher durability, but durability really doesn't matter, right? Because we can actually bypass durability altogether. Now, I really like the idea of making this uh, the Diorum or even there's a, apparently a reinforced version of it. I'm not quite sure how you get the reinforced, but this one kind of looks very create-ish. Uh, at least I think it looks create-ish, but I, I think I'm going to go with the diamond one. Um, it's basically the same, right? So let's go ahead and make the diamond version. Um, and then this can get all of the regular enchants. So we can put all the enchant stuff on here and also uh, get that three by three benefit. So if I put this in here with this, and we also could put that uh, unbreakable modifier on here, this should now be able to mine a three by three. Now it doesn't do it by default, but it should be able to mine a three by three. So actually, you know what? Let's go back up. I love that we can actually just stop this. <laughs> and we can, we can stop this midway. And now this demolishing diamond tool here should be able to mine a three by three area, just like that. It, this is fantastic. This doesn't even have enchants on it yet, but I think having a three by three hammer is a fantastic tool for building. Now I've gone ahead and upgraded it to netherite and now we can go ahead and level it up a little bit. So I do want to use some mending um, so let's go ahead and get these books combined. Let's see, that's two. Uh, and notice, by the way, I'm using efficiency two. Now this is for a very specific reason, which is kind of odd, but the actual hammer here, for some reason on the demolishing in this particular version, if your efficiency is too high, it will actually break the ability for it to mine a three by three. I know it's, it sounds a little bit bonkers, uh, but it is the case, unfortunately. Um, and so I'm limited to fortune two in or efficiency two in testing, but we can put mending on here and fortune. And unfortunately I cannot put an eternal Stella on this. Uh, the reason why you cannot put an eternal Stella is because it overrides the, uh, the, the charm, the, the prism that we just put on. So that is kind of another unfortunate factor about using this demolishing, but it should work. And with mending, uh, should work too. Also some unbreaking would be really nice. Do I have... I do have an unbreaking three. I should definitely probably put an unbreaking three on here. It is going to cost a little bit more experience, but it's it's worth it. Yeah, the unbreaking three is going to be nice. Now, the gavel on top of all of this has some other insane perks. Apparently, this gavel, the specific tool that we're using here, is supposed to have a 30% chance to actually duplicate the ore that it mines. Now, I don't know how this is affected by fortune, but it sounds kind of crazy if that does work, especially when uh, added to our charm of the hunter, which by the way, I don't even know if efficiency two is going to break it. Okay, whew, because this gives a 30% more efficiency. And so now we have a pretty quick three by three mining tool. I mean, it's not insta breaking or anything. Uh, it would probably insta break stone, but at least down here, it's able to mine this three by three, which has me a little worried because uh, I didn't actually account for the 30% boost on this. If we go back up, is this going to now be too fast? I mean, having efficiency on this, unfortunately in this particular pack because of our skills might be a big problem. Yeah, let's, uh, let's dive deeper into this. Let's see. Okay, so it does work. Oh, thank goodness. So like, yeah, I don't think going uh, over efficiency too in, in this particular pack is uh is going to benefit you i think it actually stops it entirely like i said from my testing ah yes forbidden and arcanus it is a fantastic mod it has plenty of issues to sort of work out especially in documentation which i believe is still in the works and has been for yeah years i mean on the wiki at least it is a little bit better to look at but man it is going to be like i said really nice having this nice three by three that is going to allow me to mine out and hopefully mine plenty more ore in my adventures. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic. Already just mining a couple of ore, I now have a massive amount with all of this fortune. It's just, that is a lot. Let's see, just mining this one area right here. And how many do we get? That was 61 iron. This seems a little broken, but it apparently, yeah, this this is working. 
this is this seems like it is it is actually duplicating the fortune amount which is just ridiculous this is so much ore we're getting so much i think i have accidentally made the ultimate mining tool oh goodness what have i done and with that i'm going to have to call it a day wow what an absolute journey today going from unbreakable tools to the an absolute menace of a tool to use in the mines i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and if you did be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up and guys it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that amazing thanks is going to go out to shoddy thank you so much for your amazing support by choosing to support me over on the discord by becoming a discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible Ah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one, whether that's here on YouTube or over on Twitch. Be sure to check that out down in the description below. But as always, thanks for watching. Bye!